truth or people with something to hide. Welcome back to True News. I'm Rick Wiles. When it became evident in 2007 that dark, sinister forces were propelling an unknown Illinois politician to run for the presidency of the United States of America, True News began to investigate and expose the unexplainable, mysterious past of Barack Hussein Obama and his close association over many years with known domestic terrorists, dangerous extremists, radicals, and communists. True News has been in the forefront of the battle to penetrate the news media blackout about Obama's true identity, such as the fact that he has operated for decades with another name, Barry Sotoro. Whatever you call this imposter in the White House, Barry Sotoro, Barack Obama, the Mac Daddy, the presidential pimp, the Chicago street hustler, He is a man without a past. People with money and clout have assisted Obama in covering up his earlier years. My guest today is a young family man, a Christian, who recently stumbled upon startling information about Barack Obama. For privacy and security purposes, I will not reveal his name or location I will simply refer to him as Al. He is a professional debt collector. A client hired him to locate a debtor and collect the money. In the course of tracking down the debtor, he unexpectedly found Michelle Obama's name. As he pursued the connection, the trail got darker and more sinister. Now, for the record, this man, Al, voted for Barack Obama in 2008. He is not a partisan opponent of Barack Obama. He is an American citizen who is outraged that Obama lied to him and the nation about his true identity. Now, this is the first time this information has been broadcast on radio or TV. You and I are hearing it together for the first time. So let's bring Al onto the program and let him tell us what he discovered about this lying scoundrel in the White House. Al, welcome to True News. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? I, I'm doing great. Uh, okay, so uh, by profession, you're a debt collector, and you were working on a, a case. You were trying to get information about an individual who owed money to um, uh, companies, and uh, somehow, somehow Barack Obama came into this story. Uh, Tell us how this all started. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, it was was on one of the nights that um, that I actually choose, um, you know, to go ahead and do my skip tracing, you know, because as part of my business, you know, we have to um, to verify the names and addresses of our debtors. What's what's skip tracing? Um, Skip tracing is a means by by which, you know, we actually ascertain, you know, the location, names, addresses, um, you know, verify social security numbers, um, verify previous addresses, verify friends, relatives, you know, of the individuals that, um, you know, that, that were actually skip tracing, you know, you know for, for, for the debt. Okay. So the, the first process is to make sure that the person you are zeroing in on is the actual debtor that you want. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. So you the, the, so you were working on uh, another case involving another individual, and uh, was this indi- did this individual live in Washington or Chicago? How, what's the connection? Chicago. Chicago. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. Pick up the story. Sure. Sure. And um, so what I was doing was, you know, obviously, you know, when when I, when I couldn't find a relative, you know, new phone number or current phone number, you know, for the, for the individual, you know, then, then you start backtracing. And, um, so, you know, so you start, you know, through, the, you know, through the software, you know, you start hitting the database that has information for their addresses, their phone numbers, their relatives, you know, the associates of the same address, you know, so forth and so on. And then all of their information, you know, is, is compiled and then it, it's pulled. You know, we call it, you know, you know pull, pulling the data. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when I was pulling this data, um, off of Everett, <laughs> off of Everett Avenue, you know, there, there in Chicago. Um, lo and behold, um, you know, Michelle Obama's name pops up, and um, so I, you know, so I, 
in the middle of the night, you know, when you're doing these things, you know, you just you just really don't have time, you know, because you don't you kind of don't want to lose track. So I, I just kept on going. And um, now, did, but, did know, Michelle I, Obama's name come up as a, as a neighbor of this debtor? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back in back in the nineties, back in the nineteen nineties. All right. And um, so anyway, so so as I was finished, I, you know, I I clicked back, you know, just out of curiosity, you know, I clicked on her name, and uh, and then you know, obviously, you know, Barack Obama pulled up, and then his alias pulled up as well, you know, that was attached to his social security number. What do you mean his alias? Yes, sir. Um, when when individuals um, apply for anything or you know sign a sign a form, sign an application. Um, Whenever pretty much they use a name, you know, it's associated with that address and that social security number. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently at one time, as of 2009, actually as of November 2009, um, the alias Bonnell Harrison J. or Harrison J. Bonnell was actually used with Barack Obama's social security number and his address of 5046 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60615. Harrison J. Burnell? Bunnell, B O U N E L. B O N. B O U N E L. Harrison, Harrison J. J. Bonnell. Uh huh. Or the alias Harrison J. Bonnell. I've never heard this. I thought you were going to say Barry Satoro. No, sir. No, sir. Um, actually, I looked up Barry Satoro, <laughs> and I couldn't find it. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay. And, and what's the what's the street address again? 5046 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60615. And actually at the time, I didn't even know what, what his, what his home, home, home address was. So all this to me was like, you know, hitting me, you know, just like a brick wall. I didn't even know. I, this is new to me. I have never heard the name Harrison J. Bunnell. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was the irony. Uh, that was the first anomaly that, that I discovered because it's sharing Barack Obama's Social Security number and his home address and the home phone number as well. Okay, so the Harrison J. Bonnell, it's not just that that Harrison J. Bonnell is connected to the address where Michelle and Barack Obama live. You you could say, okay, somewhere out there there is a Harrison J. Bonnell who lived there at some time and got his mail at 5046 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago. But you're saying that the name Harrison J. Bonnell shares the same Social Security number as Barack Hussein Obama? Yes, sir, the exact one. But because what I did was, um, in order to double-check these things, I have a way that I can backtrack it. And um, so when I took the Social Security number by itself and entered it into you know, my, my search screen, it, it reverted back and it pulled up Barack H. Obama, Harrison J. Bunnell, or Bunnell Harrison J. at the same time. It, showed, it gave me two results for the same social. Okay, so what happened then? Well, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm looking at it. And I said, "Well, from my own experience, when when you have multiple names with one social security number, I look at it, and well, I mean, that, you know, that's the way, the way that we're taught really is to look at it as a case of st- either stolen identity, okay, or you know, someone using his social, or he let somebody use that social, okay. That's what I was looking at. It's actually, I look at it from from the standpoint of proving the amount, you know, proving the the anomaly, you know, not taking it for granted that it existed. I had to prove it, okay? And um, so when I clicked on Bonnell Harrison J's relatives, Michelle Obama pulled up. Oh, boy. Her name pulled up as a relative of Bonnell Harrison J. And it showed up with her social, her spouse's, you know, um, her cell phone numbers and the address uh, 5046 South Greenwood as of October 2010. So when when that happens, that, that tells me one thing, okay, that whoever this Bonnell Harrison J. person is, or Harrison J. Bonnell, when they associated themselves with Michelle Obama and the 5046 South Greenwood Avenue address. So I clicked on the, the home address. I clicked on the, um, you know, the 5046 South Greenwood. And when I pulled up that information, it showed me two separate owners of the house, not the Obamas. 
Okay, so so uh, the house that Obama's living in or was living in, 5046 South Greenwood, it's not owned by the Obamas. Who owns the house? Um, a judge by the name of Jane L. Stewart. Her name, she's a um, circuit court judge in Chicago, and she is also an Obama contributor. And a Mr. Harvey Weinberg, who is a, a partner in the firm that handles Obama's taxes. How about that? His tax lawyer. Uh, yes. <laughs> His accountant, actually. His tax accountant owns the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, as per my um, national property search. And it is with the um, accounting firm of Weinberg, Solomon, Howell, and Shane. Weinberg, Solomon? Weinberg, Solomon, Howell, and Shane. And, and what was the, the circuit court judge's name? Jane L. Stewart. And so when I did a backtrack search on her name, I actually keyed her name into my to my database, and it pulled up her owning five zero four six South Greenwood. And does she spell Stewart S T E W A R T or U A R T? No, S T U A R T. Oh, okay. And she shows up at the same house. Yes, sir. On a on a, on, a, on a different search. Okay. On a separate search that I did on her. All name. right. What else did you find? Well, um, the house itself has had, um, let me get to my record real quick. I have to pull this up and excuse me for that. The house itself has had set six different PIN numbers associated with the property itself. What do you mean, PIN so numbers? What? what do you mean? It's a property identification number, and it's a number that is, that is assigned to a piece of property. And as per the Cook County Recorder of Deeds, it's a number that never changes. However... You know, the house itself has had six um, property identification numbers associated, you know, within the past um, maybe six years. Okay. You're saying as far as Cook County, um, to say a clerk of court or register, that the PIN, the property identification number, never changes even though the owners change? Absolutely correct, sir. Yes, sir. It, but in this case, it changed number, six times? Yes, sir, it's changed um, six times, from zero, um, from 2011-025-000 to, to the 37 number, which is not registered with Cook County, yet it's registered with the Treasurer's and Assessor's Office. Well, you would need somebody who's corrupt inside Cook County government to do something like that, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As That's probably Cook hard County, to find, a corrupt Cook County government official. <laughs> well, the irony is... Um, it was verified to me by you know by Cook County, and um, the woman that I was that I was speaking with um, told me that everything kind of trickles down from from the Cook County Recorder of Deeds because you have to re, you know you have to record your deed first mm -hmm. before you can even do any, do any assessments on it you know, because you can't you can't do an assessment on a property that doesn't have a deed or a title to it. D did the property actually change ownership? When you said that there were six different pen numbers in what what did you say six or seven years? Yes, sir, in, in, in six or seven years, and the answer to that is no. So the, the PIN numbers changed, but the owners didn't. Um, is absolutely that, more. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Well, well then um, that's a deliberate attempt to, to cover up uh, and confuse uh, any investigators. Yes, sir. What, what, it, what it is called, it's called a multi-layered um, real estate finance transaction. That's what it's called, and the irony is, is that William Maselli, who was, you know, obviously, you know, was Obama's mentor, and you know, and, uh, that's one of the specialties as, as per his law firm. Well, why would they do that? If, if, if what, I mean, what, 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 you, what would they be trying to hide? What they're trying to do. Remember, now, what happened was they created a trust. Okay, well, really, the trust already exists. It's the Northern Trust Company, trust number 10209, okay? And in 2005, let me get to, my, let me get to that point where this happened. Um, in 2005, a loan was, was acquired from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac for $1.32 million, okay? 
and it was acquired by the Northern Trust Company for the Northern Trust Company, trust number 10209, for property PIN number 20111115034, because PIN number 20115026 when they, in April of 2005, they did a release for zero dollars to pin number 034. And this was done by the previous owner, Frederick Wandesford. And he, and he did it to, to create pin number 034. And this pin number lasted for eight months, okay, from April of 2005 to December of 2005. It lasted for only eight months. During this period of time is when the crime actually took place, okay? Because the um, Frederick Wandesford sold the house to Northern Trust Company, trust number 10209.